Well, it was twofold. Uh, one thing was there was a, uh, we were setting up an economic trade mission. The uh, Honorary Council General, uh, Adi De Castro, uh, set it up and wanted me to go along with that. It, it happened to be the same time as the Ambassador's Tour, yeah, but, uh -huh. ours, but ours was separate from the Ambassador's Tour. Uh -huh. and theirs is a little bit more kind of sightseeing, and uh -huh. so ours was more on, on business trip. And so we, uh, um, it was basically uh, Adi De Castro, myself, uh, Chris Kate from uh, yeah. Uh, San Diego, uh, uh -huh. Jason Pagiao from Chula Vista, and then a number of business people, uh -huh. and uh, that we went over and to have a, have all these meetings. Now that was that was for the first like four or five days. Yeah. And uh -huh. then, but I went ahead and I stayed a total of two weeks. Oh, two I, weeks. Yeah, because I went then <laughs> after they after almost all the rest of them came back, uh -huh. I went on over to uh, Subic Bay yeah. and to Alangapo and uh, uh, had meetings over there that were separate. Yeah, I was supposed to go with you. But I canceled at the last minute uh -huh. because I have visitors from the Philippines yeah. also. Is this your first time now? That was my, my first time in the Philippines. Uh -huh. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But you've been to Asia before? Yeah, I've been to Guam and to uh, different other areas and I just hadn't been, hadn't been to the Philippines yet. So. Yeah. How was the long flight? 14 hour? Flight? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it was, wasn't too bad. I mean, I uh, uh -huh. got, got to watch a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I'm not much for one of sleeping on planes. Yeah, so you arrive at 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, early in the morning. Yeah. No, actually, I mean, I'm trying to remember. We got there in the, uh, I got there like about four o'clock in the evening. We left oh. early in the morning here. Oh. So yeah, so we didn't oh, take we didn't take that it, night flight. Yeah, we took the, took the morning flight. Was so it Philippine Airlines? Sir? Philippine yeah. Airlines, which was phenomenal. Uh, I, I've yeah. flown, I've flown to Asia before, like on, uh, on other airlines, and was not near as good a service. Everything as was on Philippine Airlines. How was your first day? What did you do in the first, during the first day? Um, well, the first day we had, uh, let's see, we had several meetings uh, that we had set up. Uh, you know, because we got there in the we got there in the evening, and we immediately went over and had a uh, dinner with the uh, kind of a group meeting between our group and also the ambassador's tour. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning, uh, we started off uh, with meetings that we had at the uh, uh, Ministry of. of uh, of trade and economics, uh -huh. and so we met with several of the undersecretaries, uh -huh. and uh, also then with the uh, the American Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, and so we had we met with them most of that day. That was most of our presentations on that day. That afternoon, then um, I'm trying to remember all the schedule that we did. That afternoon, then we met with the uh, Filipino uh, Stock Exchange, uh -huh. and we met with all of the uh, uh, the officers of the Stock Exchange uh, that day, and so. And spent the afternoon with them, then going over, you know, different different concepts of, of trade within the Philippines and some of the opportunities for investment, and you know what they were seeing as trends. When you made your presentation, did you have any specific tip for National City or San Diego? Uh, well, it depends because you know a lot of my presentations were a little bit a little bit looser. They weren't, uh -huh. you know, real yeah. hard sell ones because uh -huh. first of all, this was this was the very first trade mission to the yeah. Philippines uh -huh. from the San Diego area. So we kind of wanted to see what, what their needs were and then also find out kind of what their expectations of, of, of us was. And so it was, uh, uh, there was a lot of opportunities to do some, uh, you know, some real uh, kind of getting to know. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, so but, uh, most of the, the things that I was able to pre present much more 
in detail was actually over at Subic Bay and, and Longapo uh, than it was in the meetings that we had there at Makate. Uh, did you, uh, after, did you go anywhere in the evening after the first day, during the first day? Uh, yeah, well, I'm trying to remember. The, uh, we, uh, we went out for dinner. In fact, we went to, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember where we went to that night. Um, but as I say, we, we went out together, went out together and had, had dinner and everything. Um, and so we did those on several nights. Actually, more of my going out was over at, uh, once again, over at Subic Bay than it was at, yeah. was at Makate. Yeah. And, you know, Makate is, is not that, uh, uh, you know, I was there at the inter Intercontinental and also at yeah. the uh, Peninsula. Peninsula. And it, uh, that area is kind of like Plaza Bonita and, uh, oh, um, <laughs> Uh, UTC on steroids. I mean, just, there's just a lot <laughs> so of shopping, and it's all it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. basically American shopping too. Yeah, and uh, so it uh, um, uh, there uh, wasn't a whole lot of uh, uh, you know really difference there. You got a flavor, or whatever. It wasn't until you got outside of the city that you really started seeing the Philippines. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. how many days did you stay in Manila? In Manila, we were there. See, I got in there, so I left here. Sunday morning, and my arrival time there was, what would that have been, Monday night. And uh, the, uh, um, and then I left there on Friday. Oh, on Friday, yeah. To come on over, almost go on over to, yeah. uh, to Subic. Almost a week. Uh, yeah, so I stayed there about a week, and I stayed over a full week over at uh, uh, the Subic and the Longa for then. Yeah. Did you get to meet the president? Did not get to meet the, the current president. I did spend the afternoon. In fact, I didn't leave till Saturday because on Saturday I spent the day with uh, uh, President Ramos. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Him and I yeah, are good. Him and I are good friends. He's, yeah, you've been seeing it the other year. He yeah, yeah. visits a lot. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I, I spent the day with him. Uh, uh, president Aquino was in the middle of budget hearings. Yeah. And so uh, he was not was not able to see uh, see him. Uh, and uh, uh, but we did see a lot of his secretaries and undersecretaries for his different departments and everything. So after that, you left for Olongapo. Left for Subic Bay and Olongapo, yes. Yeah. And I uh, had very good meetings over there. And particularly, you know, the thing I think that we have in common with them is the maritime. And then in particular yeah. now with the U.S. Navy starting to be active in Subic Bay again. Yeah. That's, you know, that's going to be a huge difference because most of that activity is going to come right out of, right here out of National City and with the Pacific Fleet. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, so you met the mayor of Olongapo. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Oh yeah, I spent a lot of time. Oh, with him. You've met him before, you. Yeah, I had I had met him before. Matter of fact, the last time I met him, he'd got a, he was elected, but he wasn't hadn't been sworn in as mayor at that point. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, so this time, him and I got to spend a lot of time together, and uh, really enjoyed enjoyed his company. Yeah. So you saw the sign of uh, National City in the long Ah uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, matter of fact, I took a picture with uh, with that and. Uh, Put it on my Facebook and it got like 400 likes. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, so, yes. I saw some pictures in the Facebook. Uh, yeah. So, w did you say that uh, you changed your impression of the Philippines, or? Well, no, I don't think it really changed because a lot of it I I was not entirely aware, and so I got I got to have new impressions, new impressions. where I didn't have the impressions before because I didn't know exactly what to expect, wow. and uh, um, so. You know, there was a lot of, uh, uh, especially when I was over at uh, in Alangapo, I got a lot of chance to meet with the people themselves out yeah, in the uh, out in the, the uh, <clears throat> out in the city, and uh, uh, and you know it was very interesting. You had people, I mean, they're extremely proud, uh -huh, and uh, yeah. you know, and very hardworking, everything else on that line, and yet at the same time, you see a lot of need there. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. it, it's good to see the the current uh, city administration. Has I think continued the work over past that past city administration were doing to in, increase the uh, the infrastructure and uh -huh. particular particularly with flood control things along that line. Realize yeah. that's a that's a rainforest there, and so it's uh, um, but yeah you uh, uh, one of the things I think coming from this country yeah. uh -huh. going to the Philippines I think one of the things that kind of hits you the hardest is the the separation between those that are very well off yeah. and those that are not well off. There's a, yeah. and, and not much well, in between. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge difference. Uh, and, uh, and yet at the same time, people you know, seem to be able to work within that, that framework, and which we're, we're not used to that. Yeah. So that's, uh, uh, but I say, it was, it was great to see 
you know, people that are that hardworking, that whatever they have, you know, fiercely proud of, take care of it, everything else, um, and, uh, you know, and have a, uh, a great outreach for each other. We, we, you know, came across some just phenomenal stories of, of people reaching out to other people there, you know, Long Ipoh in particular, I was thinking there's quite kind of got more into the neighborhoods, and, uh, uh, you know, where there was need, people actually, you know, reaching out and making sure those needs are being met. What uh, particular do you think uh, particular uh, 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 trade possibilities or opportunities mm -hmm. that the Filipino Americans in national city can can do to the mm -hmm. Philippines based on your uh, pre mm -hmm. present, the presentation made to you? Right. Um, I, I think in, in a number of I think that we have a number of trade uh, opportunities here where we have a lot of business people that you know, supply a lot of materials, everything else, that, uh, to be honest with you, I see way too much made in China on it, yeah. that's supposedly being, you know, being sold to the Filipino people here as Filipino, and it's not. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think there needs to be, you know, bringing that back to a lot of the crafts and everything else of the Philippines. And instead of it being what I call, uh, uh, you know, knockoffs, uh, you know, from other countries, and uh, when you, when it'd be a whole lot better to have the authentic from from the Philippines, and you know, and there's there's such a there's a great amount of workforce uh, in the Philippines. I think to do a lot of different stuff, not only in the you know the things which are authentic Filipino, but then even more so, I think, in the technology areas. Um, you know, I, I walked into some of the schools, and some of the kids are just doing phenomenal work that a lot of our kids are dealing with at college levels, and these were this is more of the junior, what we would call junior high level. Uh, you know, and so you've got a huge uh, workforce here of people that are, you know, got good technical skills uh -huh. and that can be doing a lot of products that we use here. Yeah. And so, you know, while a lot of times, uh, you know, I think the U.S. has been, um, been one that's been innovative, comes up with ideas, but they have other people doing the manufacturing. Yeah. And so I think, I think the Philippines could be an excellent opportunity for, you know, for a manufacturing zone for the U.S. And, um, you know, and how much better that you you do that with your uh, what I call with your friends yeah, instead of no. countries that aren't quite as friendly with yeah, you. And uh, you know, wouldn't it be better to, to be putting your money in that direction? Yeah. Um, and I say that the, the workforce is there, and that is that is technically trained and everything else, well skilled, yeah. and does you know does you know immaculate work. Why not use it? Yeah. And uh, and in particular, you know, especially with a lot of that stuff is going to be uh, bulk shipped things along that line you've got you've got some uh, some of your maritime ports there that are phenomenal uh, deep water yeah. ports and you know that's what we should be dealing with here i mean with that that direct access how did you deal with the weather uh of course i was there in july and that's uh, the, you know that's monsoon weather we were having typhoons and everything else going on uh, after all you don't even notice it i, I uh -huh. it didn't it didn't really bother me one way or another i mean we had rain every day um I think the only day I didn't see rain was on the very last day when we drove back over to Manila to uh, go to the airport. Uh, that was, I think, the only day I didn't. We saw plenty of rain going to Manila, but Manila was dry. Yeah. And so that was the, uh, uh, the uh, I think, the only time I really saw dry anything really very dry the whole time I was there. But that's after a while, you don't even notice it. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about your background, Mayor, mm -hmm. because I've been wanting to ask you. Uh, where, sure. did, where did you come from? Where were you born? Oh, right here. Right yeah. here, so you've been a native. Yes. From, uh, what part in National City, uh, um, San Diego? Yeah. Well, in San Diego, I was I was actually born just a couple blocks outside of National City, and what uh -huh. is referred to as Shell Town now. Oh, and uh, so yeah, and then when I was a kid, my parents moved on over to National City, uh -huh. and uh, I've lived here all my life. Then. Uh, what was uh, what, what's the occupation of your parents? Uh, yeah. My mom was homemaker. My dad was actually a truck driver and mechanic. And so, uh, yeah, I came from uh, working class parents, and, uh, you know, and basically I was a uh, blue collar worker, uh, worked on the, uh, the docks, both 10th right. Avenue and 24th Street uh, terminals, uh, before I, as I, as I like to say, I went over to the dark side and took this job. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go to school? Um, I went to, uh, went to school, of course, here locally. I graduated from Water High School, uh -huh. went, to, went to the junior college out at Southwestern, and then went to some college, uh, did uh, some college outside of the junior college before the uh, uh, the Vietnam draft uh, picked me up, and oh, so yeah. that was 
What could you do? Oh, so you were uh, you you went to Vietnam? You served in. I Vietnam. did not go to Vietnam. It was during uh, that time. But yeah, that I, time. I was in the army, but I was. Oh, one, you were in the army. I was one of the ones that didn't 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 end uh, up going. Yeah. So how was the uh, national city during when you were growing up? Uh, well, vastly different. I mean, it was. Uh, we went through a number of transitions. The. Uh, um, the downtown was on National City Boulevard. Yeah, that's where uh, everyone did all their shopping, and the hospital yeah. was there. Greyhound Depot was there. everything was there. All the five and dimes, yeah. and then South Bay Plaza opened up and became like the first shopping center, and uh, and kind of that area died down. But it was it was a great place for kids to grow up, and uh, uh, you know just a, uh, a great family t uh, town. Uh, and say so then it transitioned in the '60s to what we referred to as a Navy town. Uh -huh. And uh, with the uh, Vietnam War and everything else went on with that, um, and as it became very much what we referred to as a Navy town, um, you know, it's still a Navy town. It's a different, it's a different Navy today than it was back in those days. Very professional, very, uh, you know, very elite compared to compared to those days back in the uh, back in the late '60s, early '70s. You know, whenever I see the Bay Center mm -hmm. on National City Boulevard, and I just would imagine, you know. That time when uh, it was very popular without the multiplex before. It was. Uh, we, we had the Bay Theater, we had the Abilene <coughs> Theater. Uh, Abilene later became the Pussycat Theater, but it's gone now. Yeah. But uh, we had those two theaters that were a few blocks away from each other, uh, and that's and they showed so like kids' them. movies, and uh, we were there every Saturday. Every Saturday, yeah. all the kids in the neighborhood, that's where we went. We would either go to one of the theaters or the other. And uh, yeah, I'd say that was, you know, that was. The, the kinds of things you did here. I mean, yeah. it was just, uh, didn't have near as much housing. You had a lot of open space. Uh, the pool was right here at, at Kimball Park. Uh, and, uh, you know, we didn't have the freeways in yet. And so there was a lot of, yeah. a lot of uh, areas you could roam. But as I say, uh, things change. And now we're, you know, very dense. And right kind of in the middle of everything, caught right, right between the, you know, the, the bay and Chula Vista and National uh, and uh, San Diego. And we're kind of caught right in the middle with all the freeways down and everything. Yeah. So things have changed and we're adapting uh -huh. to that. And, uh, but we're, you know, turning it back into a family town again. But just uh -huh. a, a different form of a family town than it was in the 50s. Yeah. So when you, when you, uh, when you left the service, uh, what did you do when you left the service? Uh, when I left the service, I went into construction uh -huh. and uh, work construction and, and uh, was a contractor, developer, things along that line. Uh -huh. And uh, so... Uh, um, and I said, that's, you know, uh, what I did before I kind of got caught up in this. Never had any thoughts toward politics. Uh, yeah. And so that was, uh, and I, I only got, finally got involved in this. It was only going to be for a short period of time. And here I am still in office 23 years later. How did you get involved? Did somebody persuade you? Or was there, was there an issue that uh, there was, you to? There was a couple of issues that came uh -huh. up in town. Uh -huh. And I said, what's going on with this? So I yeah. came up to City Hall to find out what was going on. Uh -huh. And... Uh, Next thing I know, I, I attended a couple of council meetings, and when it came time to talk on those issues, a couple of people pushed me forward and said, here, you go talk. And uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> next thing I know, I was stuck. How old were you at that time? Uh, I was like in my uh, uh, late 30s, early 40s at that time. So as I say, I, uh, and as I say, never had any inclination toward local government or politics or anything along that line. That never was, never was an idea anywhere in my head. So when they got to know you, uh, were you encouraged to run for any elective position? Some people encouraged me to run, and some uh -huh. people encouraged me to leave town. So it was, a, <laughs> you know, it depends on which side of the issue you were. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I for about three years, I attended all the council meetings. I was very involved, and as a uh, private citizen, as a private like citizen. On your own time. Yep, and uh, I would attend all of them. I would go through all the stuff. Matter of fact, yeah. the newspapers. When they uh, when they created offices for the council members, they uh, they made a comment in there said the ma big mistake they made was they didn't put an office there for me because I spent <laughs> more time at city hall than the council members did, yeah. and so uh, so anyway so I, I got known as the uh, the fifth uh, councilman and uh -huh. as their pain in the pain in the side and the yeah. community activist whatever so after doing that for a few years people finally said well you know it's easy to throw stones from the outside uh -huh. and it's always easy to say you know uh -huh. you need to do this you need to do that. Why don't you get on the inside and see if you can do any better? So I ran. There was two incumbents running, and I ran against the two incumbents, and I ended up winning. And uh, was this the time of uh, Mayor Waters? So what year was? That was the time of Mayor Waters at that time. Yes. Yeah. What year was? That, uh, that was in 1992. 
1990 to uh, and so that was when I uh, ran and became uh, a council member uh, and I ran uh, four four different terms as council member uh -huh, yeah. and so uh, I was 14 years as a council member before I ran for mayor and uh -huh. now this is my ninth year as mayor yeah. is there any uh, particular project or issue that uh, you think are important enough for you to to remember or Oh, as far as things we've done or, yeah, or yeah, things to any, do? Any big issue? That, yeah. that, um, uh, well, one of the, you know, some things, you know, you're, when you deal with projects, you know, you think of issues as being projects uh -huh. and, uh, you know, things to build or whatever. Um, one of the things that when I, when I came into office, the biggest problem we had was a reputation. We had a very bad reputation. Yeah. We had very high crime yeah, rates. Um, you know, our reputation was, was terrible, you know, throughout the region. And the, and the problem is, a city is kind of like a kid's room. You know, if you have your kids and, and you get their room all fixed up for a birthday party or something, it can look really nice. And yeah. then they have their friends over, and in five minutes that room can be destroyed. And then afterwards you tell your kids, fix your room up. It takes them forever to clean that room back up. The reputation of a city is the same way. It can be destroyed very quickly, and it takes a long time to repair it. Um, and so that was one of the first things was, I think, repairing... The, the reputation of our city. And I think we went a long ways on that. People look up to us now and, you know, the things we're doing and, you know, how come National City is able to do those things and our city can't, things along that line. Um, you know, and, and all the projects that we, we are able to do now and in the same way how we get consensus of the people of National City to do things. Um, you know, and a lot of the cities right around us, if they try to build anything, they try to come up with any idea, they get a lot of opposition. Everyone goes in and everybody's against it. They don't even know what it is yet, but they're against it. Uh, the, uh, uh, what we decided here on National City Boulevard for 16 blocks, yeah. we would do what they call a downtown specific plan. Now there's 18,000 households in our entire city. And what we said was on that one street, they could put in 4,000 housing units on just that one street alone by right. And if they did a traffic circulation study and did any mitigation, by right, they could do up to 10,000 housing units just on that one street. Now, you try something like that in another city, and the people would be up in arms. Uh -huh. but, but we went out, and I you know, went out and described to the people of National City, here's what you're going to get in return for this. You know, you allow us to do this density in the downtown. You uh -huh. allow us to put in all these buildings, and here's what you're going to get in return. So we, we took this out to the people of National City, and we didn't get any opposition at all. The only question everyone had is how soon is this stuff going to get built. Uh -huh. So now we're starting to build and you're going to start seeing a number of mid-rise and high-rises all down in this downtown area now. And But you know those are the kinds of things we've been able to do because we've been able to, to gain the trust of the people in National City. We're getting the trust of, of developers and builders and so we're in other cities are very reluctant to try to do these things because they know they can have a great plan but it's going to get stopped by some yeah. citizens group or something. Yeah. And, and here we're able to move ahead with those things. So, uh, uh, you know, you're seeing all kinds of construction going on in National uh -huh. City right now. Everywhere you turn, streets are being tore up, and for good reason. Uh -huh. You know, making, um, you know, our, some of our streets are some of the best streets in this county as far as, uh, you know, they just came out with this new survey that said San Diego region had some of the worst streets in the uh -huh. entire country. Yeah. Well, that doesn't, if you look, National City is helping bring that up because our streets are, for the most part, in very good condition, and we're working on a whole lot more of them. And, uh, you know, and then providing services for people. Yeah. So one of the things, when I first got elected, we took a look, and our finances weren't very good. And, you know, we had, we had spent a lot of money on, on, on long-term type of stuff, but we hadn't done the infrastructure, and we hadn't brought in businesses, and businesses are what pay for services. Yeah. And so we had, and we knew that wasn't going to happen overnight. So we went ahead and proposed to the people in National City have a one cent sales tax. Uh, okay, that's like the other cities, that was being turned down everywhere. Yeah. And so we went out and said, listen, we'll do a one cent sales tax, and, but we're going to go ahead and, and here's what you're going to get for it. But we can't put that in writing. You know, you have to just say, trust us. Right. Trust. So we said, trust me. And it passed 53% uh, of the vote. And so that was in 2006 when I first got elected, then uh, as mayor. And then the uh, uh, 2008, the Libertarian Party put it back on the ballot to repeal it. Yeah. Well, you remember in 2007 is when the recession hit. Yeah. So all of a sudden everyone's out of work, business is doing bad, everything else. Uh -huh. 
and that that's the easiest time to get rid of a tax. Yeah. So their deal was was to repeal the tax. So we went back out, and it was interesting because we had a lot of uh, news cameras and everything came here to town because they wanted to do kind of the man in the street interviews about yeah. everyone getting rid of this tax. So they started talking to people, and people started saying, we don't want to get rid of our tax. And they were actually <laughs> taking personal ownership of the tax as if it belonged to them. Yeah. And, and the news got fascinated by this. And um, so anyway, by the time the election was over, the repeal failed by a larger percentage than, it, <laughs> than the tax that passed in the first place. And uh, so it failed by 57%, which, I'm sorry, that should have been the easiest thing to get repealed during a recession. I mean, especially that recession, as bad as it was. So, uh, but we had a 10-year sunset on it. So just this last year in 2014, November 2014, put it back on the ballot to extend it for another 20 years. Oh, because at the time, in 2006, we put it, the recession hadn't hit. Yeah. The housing market hadn't dropped off. We were yeah. anticipating a lot of construction, yeah. a lot of new businesses. And, of course, we know that really didn't happen during that time period. Yeah. So we said, okay, we're going to need more time to make all that happen. So we took it back to the, the voters. And this time, it passed by 70% to extend well, it for another 70, 20 years. 70%. Yeah. So it's... Uh, uh, so, you know, so that's the idea of gaining, in, gaining yeah. the trust... Of, of the people because we showed them that that money wasn't going to be spent yeah. on fixing up City Hall or anything. Yeah. I mean, this office, this is all my stuff. This is not, yeah. <laughs> City didn't pay for this stuff, you know. And the, uh, uh, we didn't spend a bunch of money on City Hall and on new furniture or on all this kind of crazy stuff. And we didn't, uh, you know, new buildings for the city workers. We spent it on fixing up the parks. We spent it on the roads. We spent it on increased library hours for the public. We want to make sure that everything that we did, that the public saw a benefit to it. And so for that reason, the public said, hey, no, we, we can't do away with this. You know, this is, this is working out really well for us. And, uh, and, it's, and in doing so, it, our crime rate has dropped drastically. Uh, the, and it's been not only because we hired more police, but because we have all this other stuff. We, we show pride in the community. Where before, you'd see couches sitting out on corners, sitting there for weeks and weeks. Now, boom, that stuff's immediate. Graffiti's gone immediately. Everything else, anything along that line. And you see pride in community. When you see pride in community, crime rate goes down. Because the people, if you've got crim the criminal element, and they see that a community doesn't have pride, then they say, okay, this is, this is where we can get away with it. You know, this is, it's, it's okay for us to be here. When they see a community with pride, you, you see crime, crime pulls away from that. And that's what's happened here in this community. And so now we've become very much a family community. Uh, used to be like this park behind City Hall once it got dark. Families couldn't go near it. Now I leave out of here at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, and there's families with little kids here on the, on the, on the swings in the middle of the night. It's like, it's, it's entirely all family-oriented. And that's, you know, so that, to me, is, I think, one of the biggest accomplishments. I could, I could name a lot of projects that we did, actual, you know, building type of stuff. But to me, that, that is more important than buildings and those type of projects. The one we've got right now uh, that I'm spending a huge amount of time on, and it's going to be a lot of time here in the near future, is dealing with the port. Uh, our port situation is different. We have the port of San Diego is different than the other ports here on the West Coast. The other ports are a single city port. Port Wyneme, Long Beach Port, Los Angeles, Oakland, Stockton, San Francisco. You know, those are all single city ports. We're what they call a unified port. It's five cities. And so you've got five cities. You've got San Diego, and we see what the port does there, all the nice things on the Embarcadero. And, all that stuff. We've seen what they've done in Coronado. You go out on the, the ocean front now of uh, uh, Imperial Beach, you see all the stuff the port's doing there. Uh, Chula Vista, they're getting ready to do all that bayfront. And, the, yeah. and, the, and then you come and see what they did in National City, and they put all the stuff the other cities don't want, they put it in National City. Uh, and so, we, you know, and they make a lot of money off of that. And then they take that money and they, they use it to fix up the other cities. And we've said, time out. That's got to stop. You know, if you're going to be making your money here, and you're causing all the negative impacts here, a lot of traffic, a lot of truck traffic, a lot of pollution, everything else, and so you can make money to spend the other cities, you need to start doing something here in National City. So that's a big, a big battle we're having right now. Yeah. I must admit that uh, the first time uh, I saw what you were doing on, on 80th Street uh -huh. and other street, I thought that uh, they're not necessary, mm -hmm. but now I find it you know, uh, a novel idea because right. there's 
parking on the street and the tr the cars slow down. Exactly. And, you know, <laughs> and there's less uh, you know traffic or accidents. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, a lot of people and screamed I, on that same thing. They said, I "This know, is this is idiotic. Why are you taking away a lane?" Money. And uh, <laughs> too late. Can yeah. you imagine too late that they will make it one lane? Well, we, we were going to have to take 8th Street. We were just going to have to start, we were going to have to call it the, you know, Interstate 8 or something because it was just yeah. a freeway. Yeah. There was nobody that was uh -huh. coming there to shop or to yeah. stop in National yeah. City. They were just driving straight through to get to the freeway. Uh -huh. And so that street never was made for that. It was supposed yeah. to be a small business street. Yeah. And those businesses yeah. were dying. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so now because yeah, of the, the work we've done there, we've got new businesses going in. All those buildings are going to come down, all new buildings, everything else. Because now they can see we can do business there. When I was growing up as a kid here, yeah. 8th Street and National Avenue, that's what we did all of our business, that, those, those sidewalks were filled with people all the time. Yeah. And so that's what we're bringing back, and uh -huh. we're pushing that traffic over at Plaza. Plazas were, can yeah. handle that kind of traffic. Yeah. It just can't be handled on 8th Street, and now we can start bringing, bringing those businesses back and have more of a downtown and have a place where people could get out of their cars and, and enjoy uh, you know, more of a family atmosphere in that downtown area. Yeah, my friend uh, Jerry Tubau. Oh, yes. Yeah, he bought this big property on uh, 8th right. Street. 8th and 8th, uh, right on the planning, corner. Uh, you know, I don't know what I was with him, and he thinking of uh, any possible business that uh, he can put there. Well, we've talked yeah. with him about a brewery yeah. going in there, because yeah, I know, I, I know, I know they put the one there in Chula Vista, yeah. and that he's done, and, then, and I know he's got some other properties here in uh, National City that he's been working on also, but... Uh, yeah, that one, that's an old furniture store, yeah, and, uh, uh, but yeah, no, that one, that one would be great uh, yeah, for some really type of an eatery, brewery yeah. type of thing. I think would be phenomenal in that downtown. We're already seeing some, uh, you know, good results. Uh, the, right across the street, they took the old Ben's Market, and they've turned yeah, it into now the Ben's Specialty Market. It's phenomenal, yeah. and, uh, you know, and I, there's, I think, a real synergy there for a number of businesses like that. Yeah, so we can expect more houses? Here in downtown area? In the downtown area, Will yes. Will it be like condominiums? Yes. There will be more in condominiums. Uh -huh. from, from 12th Street south to 16th Street, you'll see those can be apartments. They're getting ready to build a 201-unit apartment complex right now on the corner of 16th and uh, uh, National City Boulevard. Those buildings are all getting ready to come down. They're already starting to do the work behind. You can see them back there today. Matter of fact, got all the uh, backhoes and everything starting to do work on that area. Uh, so that's getting ready to go in. That'll be a six-story project going in there uh, that's ready to go uh, but yeah you, and so from there that's gonna be apartments but everything north of 12th Street is condominiums and so, so that, that will be like an extension of the East Village and other communities exactly. in downtown area. with a lot of with the businesses down below yeah. so you'll have restaurants and stores everything else on down below with the, the living up above and uh, so yeah so that's that's what you're gonna see more and more of in the downtown I noticed that uh, you, you have been uh, so much involved with the Filipino community mm -hmm. because I often see you attending the events oh, yeah. uh, and attending the meetings. Uh, do you think there's a particular issue that the Filipino community needs in National City or, the, or, or they're just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, they have the businesses and there's not much particular Filipino type of uh, issue? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I think there's, you know, there's certainly um, I think opportunities for more, you know, upscale Filipino businesses, um, you know, in the area. There's, uh, you know, the, we have a good number, of, I think a good uh, uh, section of the Filipino community that's involved with the rest of the business community. Because sometimes, you know, within uh, ethnic communities, they kind of separate and kind of yeah, stay to uh, themselves. Uh -huh. and, and, and we've really tried to incorporate people uh, together on this thing so that, you know, we, we work, you know, work together on these. And, and we're getting some really good results on that. Um, you know, the other thing is, is the, uh, uh, within local government, we got a lot of people that work, that, you know, work for uh, yeah. the city and everything that are Filipino. Um, elected officials, that's a different story, getting them, yeah. in, getting them into the public. <laughs> and so it's, uh, you know, it, it's uh, uh, been difficult from that, that standpoint. And so we would really see, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, highly educated, you know, very bright people within the Filipino community. Um, that I think you know, public service would be a great, a great uh, place for them, and uh, a great opportunity I think to really, really shine in the, in this area. Yeah. Maybe we already have a Filipino mayor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some people said that, and uh, so, uh, but, uh, uh, but as I say, yeah, no, it's 
it, it's great working within the Filipino community here. Um, and I say, I, I love the, the synergy and the, you know, the, the, uh, the energy that there is uh, within the Filipino community. And, you know, it is, uh, you know, we just had the Mabuhay Festival uh, here at Kimball Park here a few weeks ago. Uh, and, you know, and I, I look at uh, sub, several of the activities we got coming up in the next few weeks that are citywide uh, uh, involved proposals and activities. And I take a look and a good number of the leaders in that are Filipino Americans. And so, you know, that integration, I think that is really, it's really key. You know, you want to keep the Filipino cultural identity, but at the same time, you want that integration with the rest of society. And so that, you know, it, uh, you, you make that impact outside of the Filipino community, but within the entire community, which is, which I, we're seeing happening here more and more, which I think is really great. Where did you meet your wife? Um, met her, I was right here. She, she was... Is she a native? She was native. She was... Oh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, she was born in, up in Victorville, but she, you know, uh -huh. but as a child they moved uh -huh. moved there to Paradise Hills, uh -huh. and so just uh, just right outside of National City, and so I met, met her there. How many children did you have? I've got uh, three, uh, three yeah. children, and uh, I've got uh, one daughter that's still at home with us, uh -huh. another daughter that just returned from Spain, she's living up in, in uh, Seattle, and then I've got a son in North County has a computer company. Oh, yeah. So you live here... Uh, what particular area of our national people do you live? Um, well, um, uh, right off of uh, Plaza Boulevard, there uh -huh. at, uh, in Harbison, so right, uh -huh. Harbison. right around the corner there from the Galleria. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh -huh. and, uh, uh, so yeah, right, right, right there on the, uh, the east end of town. And so, uh, yeah, that's, which that area is, is probably got our highest concentration <laughs> of Filipino Americans if there's one area that's, yeah. the concentration yeah. would probably be in that area. So, is there any other information you'd like to share with the Filipino community? Well, I, I think that, you know, there's, you know, it's realizing that the Filipino community is, is an integral part of National City. And, you know, and we want uh, not only as a community as a whole, but individuals. Yeah. Uh, the opportunities for involvement are here. And, you know, we, we not only, you know, encourage that, we relish it. And uh, want to see more and more. And I say, uh, the, you know, the Filipino culture has so much to offer the rest of the world. It really does. And uh, um, and as you know, I see that. You know, I've, I've always seen that within the culture here. Going over the Philippines just kind of blew that up that much more. Yeah. And uh, um, so yes, yeah, so I, I think those opportunities are just are phenomenal here for people within the Filipino community. And as I say, uh, as, and as I like always uh, like to say, and I. Uh, presented it over there is that uh, we are the unofficial capital of the Philippines here in the United States. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I did put that on a plaque to, uh, uh, yeah. to uh, 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 President Aquino, uh, uh, President Ramos. As yeah, we couldn't yeah. see President Aquino, so President Ramos gave it to him for me. And so I presented him with a plaque, but I signed it, you know, Mayor Ron Morrison, Mayor of the unofficial capital of the Philippines, yes. United States. So. <laughs> you know, we have the highest concentration of Filipinos uh, yes. here in, in the United States. Yep, exactly. When, uh, did you see the article about the Philippine U.S. Navy when they joined the U.S. Navy? Oh, yeah. Published in the San Diego Union? Yep, yeah. I saw that. So that's a nice... Uh, yeah. You know, nice and, um, yeah, and, you know, and it's, you know, so much, um, you know, synergy between particularly this area here, and uh, around, you know, especially around with the Navy and everything, and then with the Philippines. You know, you go over there and just about anyone I've ran into, oh yeah, they knew where National City was, oh yeah, and they want to know those certain clubs yeah. still here, I go, no, those clubs are gone. The <laughs> you know, is not there anymore, Blackies isn't there anymore, you know, they'd all ask about them. And, uh, but it was, uh, uh, you know, th th there's, there's such a synergy between the two, and I know they've got also the program over there now, of uh, U.S. retirees uh, yeah, going there uh, and, yeah, you know, yeah. and able to move there and, and do leases on properties for 10, 20, or 30 years. Yeah. And, uh, um, and so you're seeing a lot of retirees going over there, both of Filipino descent and of non-Filipino descent, uh, you know, over there. And so there's uh, that huge culture. And I think a lot of people, uh, I think, would be a lot more prone from the U.S. to, to visit the Philippines if they also understood, uh, you know, like all the time that I was in the Philippines, both yeah. in, 
in Manila, in Alangapo, and everything. I never saw one word in Tagalog. Every all everything everything. <laughs> English, I don't think I don't think a lot of people here in the U.S. realize yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and I mean that it is so U.S. friendly. Yeah. And uh, and I say when I was in Manila, American shopping malls were everywhere, and every product was the same product I had here. Yeah. I mean, it was like it was like U.S. shopping malls on steroids. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the exact same products, everything else, and very modern, and, uh, you know, and then when you even go into the, uh, into Alangapo here, they had, uh, they had the SM there, yeah. you know, a nice modern SM, and they're getting ready to build a second SM, <laughs> plus they have the other one, which is, uh, what is it, uh, Ayala? Uh, Ayala. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had, you know, I went into that one also there, you know, and people don't, you know, they, they have, you know, some kind of a, a mental vision of the Philippines, they don't realize the modern, you know, you have that, you have the distinction between, you know, really the third world, and but you also have the very modern also. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, but either one of them is very compatible uh, to anyone, I think, in the world. As I went out in the communities, and I went into some of those, some of those areas there in Alangapo, and the little windy streets, and the little back <laughs> neighborhoods and everything, yeah. and talking to people, and they were just phenomenal. Uh, you know, just yeah. phenomenal people, very gracious, very hardworking, and, uh, uh, you know, and just wanting to accommodate any way they could. It just, it was, a, you know, very welcoming. And, you know, and a lot of times when you travel to other countries, you don't always see that. Yeah. And, and I, I, th I think that's one of the things that people need to understand. And we really don't, we don't market the Philippines here that much as far as a travel destination. Even in, even in tourism. Yeah, from a tourism standpoint, we really don't. And, uh, and it, it's a great tourism market. You know, your money goes a long ways there, too. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, but as I say, it's a, it's a great tourism market, and yeah. we don't market it. We market, all these other countries get marketed, and I've been to some of those countries, and I'm sorry, they're not near as friendly as the Philippines is, yeah. Yeah, or as interesting, as far as I'm concerned. So, but you were not able to visit the tourist spot, other tourist spots outside, yeah. like Boracay and... Right, well, I, I, I'm definitely going back over. Yeah, that's and, but of course, you know, some people are saying, "Oh, well, yeah, you got to take your stuff to the beach." Everything. I go, "I'm going to be there in monsoon <laughs> weather. I don't think there's any, you know, I, you know, I yeah. stayed there and yeah. in uh, in Subic, I stayed there at the lighthouse, uh, which is right on the water. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And most of the time, I couldn't even see the bay. It was raining so hard, I couldn't even see the water. <laughs> and I was I was right on the water. Yeah. And I couldn't even see it most of the time. And uh, so uh, yeah, so I told him, I said, "Yeah, you know, this was not the time to go and." And yeah. hit all the tourist places and yeah. everything else because yeah. it's raining. It, yeah, not not that time of year. You know, go back in December, January, or whatever. Yeah, and that you know would be yeah. a time yeah. to really check some of them out also. Yeah. But uh, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, I didn't really get to do a lot of sightseeing. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. it, this was more getting into the neighborhoods, going to some of the schools, some of the yeah. some of the civic groups that are. It was doing, a trade mission anyway. Not the, well, yeah, it was a trade mission. It was yeah. the first part, and then this. The other part was both a, com a combination of trade and cultural with uh, with Alangapo. Yeah. and uh, uh, but as I say it uh, uh, as I say just it was you know phenomenal that the uh, uh, we went into one what well, was there Alangapo one night we went to one of the pizza places I'm trying to remember the name of it um, not shaky not shaky oh no 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 no, no 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 this was a place that was right there on the main street that was it's just I mean it, it's not a uh, a uh, uh, a commercial place. It was uh, gosh, I tried to remember the name of it, but uh, it was phenomenal. We had a blast in this place, and you know they they had great musicians playing, everything else. Yeah. It was just a lot of when when the uh, when the navy was there. Wow, you should oh, yeah. be there, man. Well, this was one of the places that was there from the navy, and the deal was they wanted me to get up and sing. Oh, and at the karaoke, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so what I told them, I says, look, because they were celebrating their 39th ber uh, birthday. Uh -huh. Uh, for this business, and I told him, I said, listen, you survived Mount Pinatubo, <laughs> you survived the, you know, the, the naval fleet leaving, mm -hmm. and you survived the big floods from two years ago, you yeah. wouldn't survive my singing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> That's something. Yeah, but now the, uh, the mayor belonged before he got up and sang. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, so and I cheered him on. I was, I was his cheering section, oh, big man. time. And, uh, but, uh, uh, but as I say, I mean, it's, it's, there's great entertainment, there's great food, great people, and, you know, and there is so much to see and do, uh, whether if it's from a tourist standpoint or from a humanitarian standpoint, uh, there's huge needs there, and, 
But as big as the needs are, I think the only thing that's bigger than the needs there is the hearts of the people. I mean, yeah, really, I mean, that's, that's the one thing you find real quick. It's just the hearts of the people of the Philippines are just way bigger than their needs are. And that, you know, that, that, that comes across in a, heart, in a heartbeat. Are those your souvenirs that you brought from the Philippines? Some are. The, let's see, these, this one I already had. This one was from, I think that was from Mayor Gordon back in the day. And, but now this one was from, this one was from the current mayor. From Mayor Paulino was this one. This one, one of the schools, um, their alumni there from the, uh, the high school uh, uh, gave me that one. And then, the, uh, um, and then this name plaque, actually, uh, my first night there in Alangapo, all of a sudden I, uh, I get a call up to my room. I just got in the room, and they said, oh, the mayor's down here to see you. And I go yeah. down, and it, wasn't, it was former mayor uh, Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so he, uh, he he gave me that one. So, uh, yeah, nice can they one of your cards, Mary? Certainly. Yeah. The last one. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, there's plenty more. Yeah. Too, too bad you didn't buy uh, the man in the barrel. <laughs> the man in the barrel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <sir. laughs> right. You know that. Right? <laughs>